This is obviously a special time for Georgia in the aftermath of having won a national championship and now an offseason of trying to figure out what comes next. So, you know, how does Georgia bounce back from all of this and how does Georgia get back to it with the bullseye on their back now that they were the number one team in the country from a year ago? Well, a couple of things you better have been doing. You better have been building incredible depth and recruiting at a really high level. Check. Um, Kirby's been doing that with his staff for – for a long time, so obviously since he's been here, that's been a, a thing that he's focused so many so maniacally on, and and done a great job of doing it. So you better have that. You better have some good leadership in your locker room, like Nolan Smith and and Stetson Bennett, and and you, and you know what else? It's really helpful to have a coach that's been through, like Kirby. He did it with Alabama several times. So I think you know having those things in place is is a really really good start. Uh, you're not going to be the team you were. Look at the draft, VA like. You lost 15 guys. Yeah. I mean, you just lost a lot of talent. You can't replace that in one year. You can't you can't hit that in one, um, you know, recruiting class in the last couple recruiting classes. For goodness sake, it's it's really special. But uh, you know, the opening week against Oregon is is going to be a tremendous challenge. And then if you look at the schedule, you're gonna, probably going to have some time where you can, you know, build some depth. You know, work on your defense. Y- your defense is never going to play ever at that level because it's the best front seven I've ever seen in my life covering the game or being around the game. But your defense will still be really good because of your DCs, because of Kirby, because of the recruiting. So I think that takes a step back, but I think the offense will be better than we've seen in a long time at Georgia. So you just keep doing what you're doing with the pieces that Coach has brought in place, and I think you'll be successful. One of the things I liked about Georgia's defense a year ago, in addition to all the talent, was – what I would call like the mindset, I thought they were just way more aggressive at getting after the quarterback. Now, maybe that's just because they had better players, but some of that seemed like great players are being turned loose to do what they kind of do best. Well, now Dan Lanning's not there anymore. It's Will Muschamp, it's Glenn Schumann as those co-defensive coordinators. You know, how confident would you be that Georgia can maintain that same mindset with different coordinators, in some cases different players in those kind of key positions? You think this defense will continue to be as aggressive as it proved to be a year ago? Well, you know what's interesting about this? So listen, I'm going to say this. This defense is going to be at least 10 points a game worse than it was a year ago. Hmm. Okay? That sounds horrible, Brandon. That sounds terrible. They'll still be in the top 30 in scoring defenses in the country. Like, they're still going to be really yeah. good. But you're, but you're going from historic good, historic great. Five guys drafted in the first round. That doesn't even count in the Kobe team. So, I mean, you're just – you're just talking about you're going from super special to something that's going to be different. But who was your leading stat guy? You got Beal back. You got Noel Smith, who I think is your heartbeat. The best defensive player on that in the, on that in the team is Jalen Carter to me. So he's coming back next year. So you've got a, a lot of pieces to be very successful. Yes, they're going to have to be aggressive. Yes, um, you're going to have to continue to get the quarterback, and that's something that that group I think did prove they could do really, really well at a high level, which which sets you apart from many defenses of Georgia's defensive past. But, um, again, they're going to take a significant step back, but they're still going to be really solid. Before we talk about the great stuff you have going on, I want to squeeze in one more thing kind of away from Georgia here for a moment. You know, on the NFL draft of the day, the topic of NIL came up a pretty good bit. You were pretty outspoken on TV and talking about that. I think the phrase that you used that kind of stood at me was the NIL kind of standing for now it's legal. And and yet, David, while maybe money's been a part of, you know, attracting players for a long time at at certain spots, there is something about what we've gone through the last couple of months that just kind of feels different, whether it's because of the free one-time transfer or because of how brazen and out in the open some of this kind of stuff is. And then for some people, it kind of feels like, hey, it's a problem that needs to be corrected. I guess I'm curious of your kind of opinion about this across the board. Like, do you think things are too chaotic right now? And if so, is there anything that can be done about it? Well, things are definitely chaotic. And, and, I, and I can tell you this, VA, I wouldn't want to be a coach in this environment. I just wouldn't want to do it. I mean, it would be extremely difficult to always be recruiting the next generation, to be pulling into them, coaching at the current spot, and then now i got to worry about them transferring. Now i got to worry about them getting money to be happy. I, I think it would be something that's exceptionally difficult. I think changes, yes. We need to figure out the transfer portal, how, how we – you know how we limit tampering or get rid of tampering with other schools being involved with other kids on rosters. Like that's something that can't happen. The transfer portal to me needs to have designated spots in a calendar year. Like 
you can either transfer after the season or you can transfer before the season. Like you can't, you can't transfer on a Tuesday. You know, Spencer Rattler put his name in the transfer portal on a on a Wednesday or something. You know, what I'm saying during the season. Like, you, I just don't want to see that. I think it's it's hard enough to do the things that that they're doing. But yes, when you start paying players like like this, and when it's you know unfiltered and you open it up to anybody, anytime, anywhere. Again, NIL Brandon was started name, image, and likeness to yeah. capitalize on your success in college. Okay, it I, I, it was the the point of the rule was not to pay people to come to college, which is what it became. So it's changed. I, I'm glad kids get to capitalize on on what they're able to make. But can we put parameters? Can we close some windows and make it a little bit, uh, you know, not like the wild wild west when you can do whatever you want, whenever you want. Um, you know however you want no I think that's exactly right and the sense that I get from talking to coaches is or at least you know and you've obviously talked a lot more than I have but it's almost like the transfer stuff is more frustrating than the NIL stuff that you know this idea that players get a chance to have some money that doesn't seem to be such a bad thing to so many people but as you said guys leaving during the season guys being tampered with when they haven't even shown an intention to go to the transfer portal that's some of the stuff that there seems to be the most broad support to get rid of it sounds like you kind of agree with that a hundred percent. I mean, it just you have a guy in your roster that's there, um, you know, on a Monday that you're just terrified he's going to be there on a Friday, you know, and, and somebody else was talking to him. And guess what, guys? VA, I was in school as a freshman in school. I did not play very much. Mm-hmm. I wanted to play more. I was frustrated with my coach who was there. Like, I went to Coach Rick. I went to his office. And I was like, Coach, you know, I, I don't love this. I don't want to be here. What, what are you? I mean, I, I don't. I, I'm not dealing with this well. Every freshman feels that way, dude. Yeah. Every freshman goes through growing pain. And sometimes when you stick it out and you push through, you realize, like, all right, dude, I got this. If you have a free get-out-of-jail-free card or a free pass right now to go use it, well, then you're going to use it a lot of times. But we need to teach these kids to, to continue to fight and stick through a season. I'm not saying to stay somewhere where you're miserable for four years. I'm not asking you to do that. But if I start a season – and I'm dedicated to my team and my coaches. I need to finish. You know what else, VA? Coaches need to finish freaking seasons too. Mm-hmm. How about that? Like, yeah. is that too much to ask? Yeah. My coach should not be able to dip out on me either and go, hey, you know, I'm going to get another job. I'm gone. Yeah. Like, that, it, should be, it should be the same standard for the coaches as well. But I think that would make college football easier to, to, to mandate. I, I also think it would be better for the players. I think they might realize something about themselves after a season that they go okay never mind I was wrong no I think that's really well said uh David I I love your thoughts there on that I also love the work that you're doing out there in the community we're really excited about being with you coming up on uh Monday May 23rd for a great golf tournament you've been doing this now for quite some time everybody who participates has a good time a lot of money's raised for a great cause including the strong for life initiative from children's health care of Atlanta but beyond that your foundation the Pollock Family Foundation which you can find online at PollockFamilyFoundation.com continues to do a lot of great work i know childhood obesity is a very important thing to you obviously health and fitness is something you've dedicated a large portion of your life to and that's kind of some of the stuff that the pollock family foundation is doing would you mind telling us a little bit more about that and for folks who want to support someone like you who's using some of the fame that you've been given for a great cause like this making us all a little healthier and certainly our children a little healthier just tell us a, a little bit about kind of some of the stuff you've got going on with that well I, I, we've we've done a really we've done a good job and it's been really fun for what we've done so far. And our big initiative has been, um, you know, childhood obesity and how can we help people get healthy, but we've also kind of expanded now. And we really just, we want to, when we see a need, we want to serve it. And, you know, we're, we're actually teaming BA with, uh, we're teaming up with the university of Georgia. I met with uh, Josh Brooks, you know, several weeks ago and we're working together. We're we're, going to go into some of these places that need a little TLC and, and go, you know, rebuild some parks. And we're going to go and redo some places and make some places places in Athens a lot better. And so we've been raising funds and we've been doing it. We've been supporting Children's Health Care of Atlanta. We're going to continue to because they're such an awesome, you know, they've been such a great organization for so long and done such great things. But we're also going to get, you know, into Athens and really, you know, some places that need some TLC, we're going to come in and we're going to pour some money into it and change some things and, and serve some people in the, in the community in Athens. So we've kind of rebranded our, our Pollock Family Foundation a little bit just so we can do Great. whole life health and go, when we see a need, man, we want to meet it. Like, I see something that, that we need, we see something that needs to get addressed. We're going to go try to make a difference. 
Well, I know you for a long time, David. I know how genuine you are about stuff like that, making uh, parks look better, making children healthier. If you ever start a program to make podcast hosts a little healthier, uh, let me know about that because I'm sure I could probably sign up and get, take advantage of that myself. <laughs> We got the cover, BS. All right, David, thanks a lot. We'll look forward to seeing you at the golf tournament coming up on Monday, May 23rd. And truly, I encourage everybody to get involved. PollockFamilyFoundation.com. Find out about the great stuff they've got going on. Make a donation and support David as he meets needs all across that community and the folks working there at the Pollock Family Foundation. They do the same thing. David, thanks for your time here on the show today. Appreciate the big dog. Have a good one. Good stuff there, David Pollock, great former dog, host on ESPN College Game Day. And, you know, listen, it's one of the things we like to do around here, which is that. We're going to bring on those people. Obviously, anytime you have a chance to have a you know a former UGA great, that, that's a good thing. But there's a specific kind of person we like talking to. It's it's that person who clearly cares about the subject, not just because it's a good paycheck, and not just because hey you've you know got some fame from it. Like you get the sense that David wants college football to be there for the next generation of people who can use it as a tool the same way that he's used as a tool to get education, to, to get life training, to, to, you know, to be really a whole man, you know, everything that kind of goes along with that. Like that's what obviously David kind of views college football as being, and that's what he kind of wants it to be for that next generation. So when we talk to these people, we're going to talk to people who, you know, genuinely view the sport as, you know, a, a force for good and want to make sure that kind of stays that way in the future and clearly whether it be opinions about who's going to win or lose games or opinions about what needs to happen to make the sport better clearly david's got a lot of enthusiasm about that topic and that's why it's always fun to see him on tv representing uga working for espn but also fun to have him on a uh, show like this as we said before you know listen too much is given much is required you go through a um a place like you know uga you have a great career like that you're, you're going to have a really big platform. So how are you going to use it? You're going to use it, you know, for, for good here. And we love to see all these former Georgia players who kind of leverage that fame to, to benefit others. That's always a great thing to be able to see. And uh, David Pollock is certainly an example of that there as well.